Okay. I, uh, I think it should work now. Uh, so first of all, let me thank you to Orbis Ferrarum and Ogo for uh, letting me speak today uh, my lecture about the Beachy Scala Cave in the Moravian Karst, especially thanks to Claudia for organizing everything and uh, great thanks to Peter Ramsel who is uh, letting me do this lecture in his office and he's here. <laughs> so. <laughs> Thank you all for coming and I hope uh, I uh, won't annoy you too long time and uh, you will find this presentation interesting because it's one, about one of the most famous sites in today's Czech Republic, the Beachy Scala Cave. Uh, today I will speak mostly about uh, early Iron Age, uh, but it's uh, also a famous site uh, for its uh, paleolithical research and uh, also in Neolithic and so on. So as uh, already been said, I now study my PhD at Charles University in Prague. So Vichy Scala Cave in the Moravian Karst. Yeah. <clears throat> First of all, uh, just to let you uh, end the topic, uh, Moravia is uh, Eastern part of the Czech Republic and culturally belongs to the East Hallstatt culture, all the Moravia, not just its southern part. Uh, we can uh, see two cultural groups in Moravia, first one in the northern and central Moravia, Platinice group, and the second one it's Horakov group in the southern Moravia. It's quite important that we include both of these groups in the East Hallstatt culture, as you can see on the picture. Beachy Scala Cave itself lies in the middle of uh, all, uh, on the border of these two groups, which is also quite important. And uh, maybe it's also important to say that these two, two cultural groups we can find just in Hallstatt C1, so uh, in the beginning of Hallstatt period, till D1 and in D2 and D3. Uh, when the cultural differences disappear, we just call it Moravia in the late Hallstatt period. Uh, just, uh, just again this, this picture for uh, letting you see uh, the cultural situation more far. Uh, what's important also, we can find Platinica group uh, in Bohemia and uh, Western Slovakia. Uh, for you is well-known Kalendenberg group and uh, what's uh, quite uh, uh, affecting the situation in Moravia, uh, it's a uh, Bekerzuk culture, which is here. Uh, maybe it's also important to say uh, how the situation or the look on the Vichyskala cave resonated in the foreign countries. Uh, in 1995, the Bible uh, of the Beachy Scala Cave was written by a team of uh, uh, researchers uh, led by Hermann Patzinger, uh, Jindra Nekvasil and Fritz Eckhard Ward. And uh, in the same year, uh, the work from Walter Torbrige, Dike Heimlise von Horakov uh, was also published. Um, as you can see, uh, both of the works uh, are from the foreign researchers, not from the Czech one. And, uh, uh, yeah, and uh, <clears throat> it shows the situation about the weak knowledge about Moravia in foreign countries because uh, in last 30 years, uh, about 90% of new information con which is connected to the rescue archaeology uh, we gained from the Tyrian uh, and they are not still all quality or quantity published. And uh, also many, uh, <clears throat> many outputs are in Czech, rep uh, Czech language and just a few texts in German or English and also no complete more complex monograph about uh, Moravia, even about Horakov or Platinice group wasn't really so. Uh, that's the situation that the, the research of the Moravian Hallstatt period was pushed by foreign authors and we are like trying to change a little bit the situation and uh, uh, we can say put the Moravian Hallstatt period in the game again. Now Central Cave Sanctuary Beachy Scala. 
Uh, you can read some of the proclamations, the secret of the Bici Scala cave, uh, eternal secrecy of the Bici Scala, greatest secret of the Moravian prehistoric period. So even for domestic researchers, Bici Scala cave was something really special, secret, and uh, we can say every researcher has its own opinion on this on this central site. And uh, after, ma after many years of research, we can say some of the questions were already answered, but there is more and more questionnaire marks now even after the, uh, our excavations. A treasure of Moravian prehistory from 1872. Uh, Vichy Scala Cave lies in the Moravian Karst, you can see this image, in the central part here, and it's uh, the second largest cave in the Czech Republic, uh, with its longitude about uh, 18 kilometers, uh, but in the prehistory just a small part uh, was used. We will see the picture again. Uh, the history of research, uh, maybe it's necessary to say that not just archaeologists, but also many other researchers like speleologists, geologists, and other scientists enter the cave and uh, do their uh, research here. The cave was also influenced by sand mining in, in the middle of 19th century. And uh, what's crucial, uh, it was part of the Branov Kristine Liechtenstein complex, which is maybe not no name for you, but maybe you can know. Uh, Lednice Baltice Liechtenstein complex, which is based on the same structure. It's a romantic Liechtenstein park, and uh, Bici Scala cave itself was quite remodeled inside. So it's necessary to mention it also. It architect was uh, Josef Hartmut and landscape architect because it's not just inside the cave, but also the park. Uh, uh, park constructions outside the cave and the landscape architect was Bernhard Petri. So uh, Bici Scala cave uh, also lies uh, in the beginning of tourism in today's Czech Republic and these touristic, uh, uh, touristic visits uh, inside the cave left us uh, some, uh, <clears throat> uh, some interesting inscriptions on the walls of the cave like uh, here you can see the inscription of Josef Hartmut or famous general Baron von Lauden. Uh, one of the most important or most prominent person who ever entered the cave was uh, Emperor Frantisek uh, II and his wife Maria Theresia Neapol Sicilian. Here you can see the reconstruction of their visit inside the cave. Now uh, to the history of research itself. Uh, in 1862, Heinrich Wankel interested about the Vichy Scala cave and he made some sondage inside the entrance hall, southern branch and pagan stones. But uh, he didn't, uh, didn't found Vichy Scala cave so interesting. So he quite the cave, uh, quite excavation in the cave and left it. But after the discovery of the bronze figurine by cousins Falkos, uh, he decided uh, to ask Liechtensteins for money uh, for new excavation. He received them and in 1872, he uh, made uh, aerial uh, excavation in wall entrance hall. So that's the famous uh, discovery from 1872. On the photo, you can see a uh, young Heinrich Wankel, and here is a reconstruction of uh, Heinrich Wankel and his daughter uh, examining objects found in the cave. He was the first who enters the cave, uh, but uh, there, is, uh, there are more researchers who uh, take excavations inside the cave, like uh, Martin Krisch in uh, 1891 and 1892, in the 1920s, German amateur archaeologist in Southern Branch searching for paleolithic situation. Uh, in the 1936-1938, famous Czech researcher Karel Absolon also in the Southern Branch for the paleolithic uh, uh, excavation. 
in 1937, Hans Freising again in the entrance hall. And in the 1990s, there was an attempt to raise enough funding for the excavation uh, by the Bichiskala Cave Foundation. But uh, we can say maybe fortunately, it was never realized. Uh, in 19, uh, in 20, uh, 2020, we decided uh, to uh, do a sondage, uh, sondage excavation inside the entrance hall together with Martin Gullens and wider team of the specialists. And these excavations were uh, led uh, in two years, in tw uh, 2020 and 2021. Uh, here you can see some important publications about the Beachy Scala Cave. First one, of course, uh, was uh, Bild Builder aus der Märischen Schweiz und ihrer Vergangenheit, uh, released uh, or published here in Vienna in 1882. As I said already, the Bible from uh, Hermann Barzinger from 1995 and uh, many other works, uh, mostly from... Uh, <laughs> the years uh, which are ending on five, like uh, Zahada Michi Scali, or uh, the latest work of Martin Goletz from 2017, the phenomenon of the Beachy Scala cave. Uh, now, uh, the use of the cave uh, in time, uh, as I already said, for us or for me, it's most important Hallstatt period. And uh, <clears throat> and uh, also Paleolithic research here, but uh, you can also inside the cave uh, find uh, other time periods like partly Neolithic, Bronze Age and so on. Quite important uh, is uh, in Neolithic period uh, when, where you can find inside the cave one of the oldest painting uh, in the cave. Also Classicism or Romanticism as a part of the Vranov Krstiny Liechtenstein area. And uh, what's also for us important, World War II, because uh, during uh, 1945, there was an attempt to uh, construct the secret underground Nazi factory uh, for crafting uh, some parts, uh, some parts for the war industry. But uh, <clears throat> And now we can say that uh, this construction didn't affect the situations in the Vichy Scala so terribly uh, how it was fought before. I will speak about this a little bit later. Basic principles to study the Vichy Scala cave again uh, and again. Okay. Sorry. Uh, it's important to say why the Vichy Scala and why still do one same site? Well, uh, because of the uh, <clears throat> uh, because uh, of the systematic data collection since 2017 and for Vichy Scala Cave since 2007, uh, we can say the Vichy Scala Cave is one of the most important sites for the all Hallstatt period in Moravia, because when you study the society from top down and uh, you begin with elites, uh, then you can find the biggest concentration of elite finds from all the Moravia in one place and it's Beachy Scala Cave. Okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I got like my uh, <laughs> screen turned off. Now it's working. Thank you, Peter. Uh, just very briefly, uh, for us, it's really important also chronology, because when you want to study society, so it's quite like a long time period from 800 BC till 450 BC and uh, more precise chronology, it's important uh, when you want to divide uh, stages and so on. So uh, here you can see uh, the important uh, elements for Moravian, not uh, of course, not just Moravian chronology, like wagons, yokes, uh, parts of the horse harnesses, belts, weapons, uh, and so on. Also, of course, fevery. And uh, maybe just say uh, that uh, for Moravian prehistory or Moravian Hallstatt period, the most important it's to use 
the chronology based on the metal finds. Uh, when you use chronology, you know, uh, I know this uh, table looks terrible. I won't explain it all, but uh, when you do the precise chronology, you can study Vichy Scala Cave in the different stages, uh, which is quite important because uh, before, by many researchers, Vichy Scala Cave or event in the Vichy Scala Cave were considered to be single time event. So once and never again. But uh, when you study all the artifacts from the Vichy Scala Cave, you see the differences in the time periods and you can say that Vichy Scala already started sometimes uh, around 600 BC and it's uh, finishing about 450 BC with house D3. I will speak about this later also. Uh, chronological topics and problematics of sources. Uh, what's important to say that uh, elites of the Moravian uh, Hallstatt period appears already in Hallstatt C2, but they are like spread in the, all the landscape in elite mounds and so on. Uh, but uh, in Hallstatt D1, they already disappearing from the landscape. And with how the Vichy Scala Cave, you have no elites in all the Moravian landscape. But when you took a uh, Vichy Scala Cave, uh, you can see that all the elite stuff, it's now uh, placed in the one place and it's the Vichy Scala Cave. Uh, <clears throat> you can see the here on the picture, two centers of uh, Platinice group and Horakov group here. And these two centers probably generated the Vichy Scala Cave Sanctuary together. Uh, we can say it uh, also based on uh, our excavation in Vichy Scala Cave and of course about the artifacts. So it, Vichy Scala Cave, it's not generated from one center, from this center, which is a little bit closer, but probably from both of them. Uh, role of the Vichy Scala Cave for the research of Hallstatt D in Moravia. Here you can see the plan uh, of the Vichy Scala Cave. Uh, this is Pretzin, which is entrance hall, uh, Southern Branch, which is uh, Yizhny Odbočka, uh, famous uh, for its paleolithic research, and from this line behind the southern branch, you cannot find other artifacts from other periods near, uh, and also not from Hallstatt period. So most of the artifacts from Hallstatt period you can find in the entrance hall. What do we think about the Beachy Scala cave now? So first of all, it's necessary to say it's a horizontal cave with small entrances. You can go inside by foot and you don't have to climb anywhere. So it's not a portal or chimney cave. It's important to say. And uh, when you co can go inside or walk inside the cave, it will be always multifunctional area and you have problem when you won't find just one interpretation or one function on, of this place. So in, 19, uh, in 2020, Martin Gollet suggested for practical functions for uh, Vichy Scala Cave. First one, it's visiting residential production and sacrificial burial and sacrificial what if. We think uh, uh, it's uh, based on the new work with context. Uh, we try to return to the original source sources of finder Heinrich Wankel and uh, because some of his descriptions are quite appropriate and uh, it's uh, the biggest change uh, against the work uh, of Hermann Partzinger who suggested the cave to be like sacrificial place compare it to Slovenian cave Mushayama which is chimney cave and the situation here is here uh, it's made by throwing objects inside the cave but in Bici Scala cave they are continuously put in the cave uh, and buried in the cave and not thrown. Here you can see uh, the situation from, uh, uh, from uh, the entrance hall. So here uh, are the so-called cremation grounds, the big one and the small one. Uh, 
here lies uh, most of the most of the burials or skeletons. Uh, here it's suggested the so so called smithy with the finds of uh, uh, of artifacts uh, and uh, waste production waste and uh, and so on and uh, the big shard ground. <clears throat> Uh, identification of elites, just uh, just uh, briefly, uh, we can set the suggestion of uh, Wolfgang Kimmich, uh, who said the uh, elite you can uh, what uh, <clears throat> uh, what's elite you can consider like princely seat, burial monuments, and luxury important or imports, and uh, uh, this definition is basically still valid today. Uh, here you can see two examples. Uh, first one, uh, these are uh, uh, female, uh, so-called uh, female magnates with compound belts, which is quite uh, uh, a local phenomenon, Moravian one. And uh, uh, in the Horakov group, uh, you can find these luxury, uh, luxury belts, which are sometimes uh, constructed from uh, at, at maximum 15,000 of small bronze rings. You can find them in the graves, like in Modrice. And in the Platinice group, same, same uh, belts are stored uh, or deposited in the hoards. Uh, again, Bici Scala, uh, just a graph for C. Uh, in 2018, before the discovery of the wagons, which I will speak about later, almost 40% of all elite find, founts, finds were placed in the Vichy scale from all the Moravia. So you, you take almost half of the things from elites and put, you, put them into the cave. Uh, some examples of elite context from Hallstatt D. Uh, here you can see uh, the female graves with compounded belt, also a male grave with toreotics, uh, this is a famous, uh, famous hoard from Naklo or a stone architecture from Jevičko. Or here uh, some elite context from later period, uh, also Hallstatt D or LTA. It's of course Beachy Scala with its gold or wagon parts, but uh, uh, also some hoards like Kralice Nahane or some a uh, specific uh, type of architecture like uh, a homestead in Kuzim or uh, uh, elite hill fort uh, Yeshkovice with uh, Acropolis and suburbium divided uh, with uh, elite hordes like parts of the wagon and so on. A social background of the Bici Scala cave, compound belt, uh, woman graves, uh, as you can see just on the map, it's the phenomenon of Horakov group, which I already said. You have some examples here. Some uh, of them you can very rarely find uh, in uh, foreign countries, like here in Altheim, Heilig Kreuztal, Spekau, or uh, uh, I guess in uh, here in Austria in Tunau am um, uh, What's from the second group, from the Platinice group, uh, stored inside the Bici Scala cave? The, probably the hordes. Uh, as you can see on the picture, uh, hordes are the phenomen phenomenon of just Platinice group. It's, it's specific. You can see some examples here. And in the Bici Scala cave, we are stored some of the artifacts uh, which are not connected to the skeletons or to the burials. Uh, like these uh, bracelets, which are connected in the, into the chain, so they were placed inside the cave as a water. Uh, here, uh, just the amber. Amber uh, is one of the key commodities uh, which we can uh, find uh, also in the Vichy Scala cave. And uh, after uh, one new discovery uh, from the horde of Banov, where is almost 2,000 pieces of amber, uh, Bici Scala cave, it's now second uh, largest concentration of the amber uh, of the old Moravia. Glass beads, also the biggest concentration of glass beads from all the Moravia, you can find uh, almost or slightly, uh, slightly more than 4,000 subtile glass beads. 
uh, as you can see uh, he here, like on the examples. And uh, <clears throat> also the typological spectrum of beads suggested uh, that maybe uh, there was a local workshop or some, some uh, local preparation of glass beads as uh, already suggested Thea Elisabeth Havernik in 1979. Uh, now uh, I will slightly move to the topic of the wagons inside the Vichy Skull Cave because wagons and uh, horse harnesses and everything concerning topic of the horses, it's my great hobby. Uh, I'm interested about uh, this topic since 2014 and about wagons from BT Scala since 2019. Uh, and in 2019, uh, I decided to do a new analysis of the wagons from BT Scala cave because there was some uh, not yet clearly answered questions. Uh, uh, my analysis uh, is based on the chronological typological analysis uh, published in works of Christopher Payer and Martin Traxel. Uh, first big question is how many wagons we have inside the Vichy Scala cave? Well, uh, there were many opinions. Uh, some of the scholars uh, suggested that we have three wagons, as you can see here, or Christopher Payer already five wagons, Martin Traxel 10 wagon units, but uh, he never said the final number of the wagons. And some analogies uh, were also published by Julia Katarina Koch in 2006. <clears throat> so why the numbers uh, are so different? Well, there is quite big problem that researchers only work with the wheel components and then did not consider others which Fritz Eckhart Bar did not safely arrange among other parts of the wagons. Uh, I, con I uh, started to do it differently. I took all the possible parts of the wagons and then I made the analysis. So uh, <clears throat> then we can work also with the parts of the wagon body or the decoration of the wagons, which is quite important as you will see late, a little bit later. And can we speak about the funeral wagons or burial wagons? Uh, this uh, question, it's already answered by Heinrich Wankel uh, when he's describing the finding situation. Uh, you can read it in uh, German here or in the core lay pieces of wheels, iron nails of wheels lined with bronze and beneath them some partially calcified and partially charred remains of an individual. So it means basically that on the wagon was lying someone and uh, after the, this description, which is quite uh, quite pointing to just one wagon, we say we can say it, it's wagon V1. And of course, uh, also it's necessary to say that all other wagons in all the Europe we can find just in the funeral or burial context, which means in graves. Uh, wagon components uh, and Vichy Scala cave and their context. Uh, also, first step was the typological and chronological determination of wagon components. Basically, uh, here you can see the combination table, which is really important. Uh, firstly, was the typology chronology and what's the most important, the minimum number of different components. Sounds terrible, but practically it means when you have six nave caps of six different types, it means you have to have six wagons because in one wagon, uh, different nave caps are never combined. So you have six types of uh, nave caps, five types of spoke fittings and so on, which means uh, also that you have to have uh, six wagon at least. Also, uh, style similarity helped me to set the combination of the wagon and of also existence of reconstructed wagon exhibited here at the Naturhistorisches Museum in Vienna and the identification of parts of the almost identical wagon like in Ebedingen Hochdorf, which I will speak uh, in the moment. So <clears throat> 
the answer is we have seven, seven contexts of wagons in the Vichy Scala cave after the combination of all elements, as you can see here. And six contexts means existence of six different wagons marked by me as a wagon V1 to wagon V6. And seven contexts is unrecognized semi finished products. Uh, for the production of sheet metal parts for, for the wagon body V7, which points to the some storage of rests or waste from the local production workshop. Here, uh, slightly about wagon V1. This picture is just uh, for uh, show you some most prominent or most frequent analogies uh, like Donaward or uh, as uh, Reimer Eagle and so on. Uh, here is uh, your Viennese uh, wagon V1 with its different components. And on the left side, his twin, almost twin from Stuttgart, but Kanstadt. And they have uh, at least uh, five analogies together. And they differ just in the decoration of the wagon body, as you can see here. Wagon V3 was the biggest surprise because all the analogies points to the one type of the wagon in Europe and it's a wagon from the uh, uh, most uh, richly furnished uh, male grave in Hochdorf. Uh, it's on the left side and uh, uh, same components we can find also in the Vichy Scala cave. First of all, it's necessary to say that uh, uh, Wagen in Hochdorf was the only one which is covered by iron. And uh, also in the Vichy Scala cave, one of the Wagen has uh, its wheels covered by iron and it bears almost identical decoration. So it's the same type also of the Wagen naves, tires and so on. They differ in just one, uh, one detail, which is uh, part of the wagon body. From Hochdorf, it's, uh, it's iron also, like the wheels, but in Vichy Scala cave, it's almost the same decoration, but in bronze. So uh, about 800 kilometers in Vichy Scala cave, there is a twin of Hochdorf wagon. And uh, briefly about wagon V6, I chosen the most interesting one. Uh, it's the last uh, wagon which was deposited inside the cave. Uh, we have just a few parts, uh, mostly the parts of the naves, uh, some fittings, tires, decorations and so on. And this dating is also supported uh, by the existence of some uh, decoration of horse harnesses and uh, what's uh, like uh, what's quite interesting about one decoration, uh, decoration pin was laced with the coral necklace, which was unrecognized. Uh, here you can see interregional contacts of the example of the wagons of the Vichy Scala cave. I've marked some uh, most frequent analogies. As you can see here, uh, most of them you can find in Baden-Württemberg, which is quite surprising because when we start to find analogies or search for analogies, we always look to the neighboring uh, neighboring regions like Bohemia or Poland or so on and so on. But uh, uh, these wagons uh, have probably its origin in Baden-Württemberg. Uh, just briefly about source areas of uh, other types uh, of artifacts from Vichy Scala Cave. It's not just a about wagons, but also about amber, about toreotics, weapons, and so on. And uh, you can see uh, the source areas. Uh, we have um, artifacts uh, coming from Poland, from Etruria, from Slovakia and uh, so on. So uh, even from the north, south, west and east. Uh, yeah, here are just some of, of the examples suggested uh, which uh, artifacts came from which direction. So there is a western direction like belts, fibuli and so on. Uh, amber from north, 
some uh, eastern type finds like uh, so-called Scythian chickens or uh, eastern type arrowheads, part of the goritos or cheek piece of a horse harnesses, southern origin like some types of glass, fibuli, tereotics and so on. And uh, uh, about some uh, artifacts or finds we think that they have Moravian origin like uh, compounded belts, tips, types of the bracelets uh, and so on. Uh, it is from Moravia and Austria. I uh, just wanted to show you some uh, similarities uh, uh, between uh, uh, Bici Scala and uh, Austrian sites. So famous uh, bull figurine from Bici Scala have uh, very uh, similar, uh, similar uh, <clears throat> elements like uh, vessels from Gemeinde Le Barn or famous, uh, famous cow with calf from Hallstatt. Also uh, here you can see the style uh, from Klein Klein, so the uh, pointed tarotics. It's also can be also find in the Bici Scala cave. Uh, so for a conclusion of wagons, not all the lecture yet, uh, you, we can say that uh, we have some basic facts, like uh, in Hallstatt D1, we have no lo longer elite warriors in the landscape. In Bici Scala cave, there is at least six wagons and maybe part of the workshop. They are dating, you can see here, and the most frequent analogies are in Baden-Württemberg. Uh, also, uh, we can conclude it's the largest concentration of uh, uh, metal covered wagons from all the Hallstatt period in Europe in one place, in what, like one grave on our burial ground. All, and maybe there is also a local workshop for production of prestigious items. Of course, uh, we can see in Vichy Scala Cave a strong connection with elites and uh, uh, after one cross description, there is a burial of prince or princess on the wagon, probably, uh, and concerning the wagon from Hochdorf and the Vichy Scala cave, uh, we can think maybe at least about the same craftsman workshop technique or and so on. And uh, of course, it points to the long distance context. And uh, what was quite surprising, there is a rediscovering of elites in Hallstatt G3 and Bici, in Bici Scala cave. And we suggest uh, uh, the, the dating of the Bici Scala cave about 125 years about main function. You have, uh, you can uh, see here some artifacts and they are dating, uh, they are division into three different stages, Bici Scala one, two and three. <clears throat> so, uh, now, uh, interpretation, offering place or burying ground, and why not both or more? Uh, from uh, 1872, many scholars uh, have different, different opinion and interpretation about the Vici, Vici Scala cave. Some of them uh, are considered to be valid till today, but uh, when uh, you are testing them with uh, basic three questions, you can see it's not possible to have now some of these interpretation. Main questions are, is this cave uh, horizontal and uh, then contact or it's a ver vertical cave and non-contact? And the answer is cave is horizontal. How long the processes in the cave lasted? approximately about 125 years, so not a single time even. And then, does interpretation count with the highest elites? Yes, in the Bici Scala cave, definitely. So, uh, the burial of the magnate or bloody family revenge or beating of the group of refugees or blacksmith, uh, all some obscure interpretations like the fall of the grave uh, of the cave sailing, we can just delete because it's uh, not uh, 
it can not be burdened with these three questions. Now we can uh, think about the Vichy Scala cave. It's a cave sanctuary with elite burials. Uh, entrance hall as a sanctuary uh, for different use of the place in the Hallstatt period. What if place at the North Wall? Uh, also, it's necessary to say all the uh, artifacts are not connected with, with elites and they are probably uh, somehow uh, uh, devoted in the, uh, and offer it in the cave, especially the food remains or as you can see the bracelets. Uh, in the middle of the cave we have bridge people and uh, the rest of the production workshop here and uh, concentrations of concentration of cer ceramic vessels with food uh, are somewhere here. <clears throat> there is artistic reconstruction of the uh, burial of a magnate or a prince. Uh, Heinrich Wankel himself described one ma magnate uh, which had the dagger and uh, he is not originally burnt magnate on the wagon or that uh, magnate described on the wagon. Uh, Bici Scala cave as a burial of, or print of a princess or the burial ground or a tomb. Uh, he described uh, four female magnates and the most famous one of them is the so-called Wankel's princess with the golden earring, earrings. Uh, it's the school he never sold, of course, and now it's stored uh, in the Moravian Museum. Here you can uh, see uh, artistic reconstruction of how this uh, Wankel's princess can look, and this is an older one from Burian. Sanctuary Bici Scala as a smithy. Uh, Wankel also described the smithy as a place production of iron, bronze, uh, and bronze with tools and semi-finished products. Uh, critically, we has to, uh, have to say, we don't know if the production itself uh, took place inside the BG Scala cave or just the production way, uh, waste and uh, tools were placed inside the BG Scala cave. But there is uh, uh, many tools like uh, axes, hammers uh, and uh, uh, and uh, like, yeah, like uh, <clears throat> ingots and semi-finished products and so on. And here there is uh, also artistic reconstruction. And uh, last but not least, uh, Bici Scala Cave as a central place. Uh, we allowed us uh, to include Bici Scala Cave like one of the part, one part of the bigger unknown central uh, central sites of the Hallstatt culture in Hallstatt D1, TLD3, uh, with the highest concentration of elites in all the Europe, as you can see uh, on the picture, like Hallstatt, Klein Klein, Zavist near Prague, Hohenasberg, and so on. Uh, the question is, where the people from the Bici Scala cave, cave lived? Uh, well, it's a big question. Uh, in the 2020, we suggested that might be uh, one settlement structure to Bici Scala Cave, 20, uh, 12 kilometers from Bici Scala Cave Hill Fort, Yeshkovice Chernov. Uh, which can be connected also with the existence of the Bici Scala cave and their phases. And uh, it's one of the most uh, interesting also LTA uh, uh, sites uh, because there is more than 15 iron hordes uh, and uh, uh, also it's a uh, uh, fort with Acropolis and Suburbium divided. And uh, also the first uh, uh, horde of the elite category in ELT LTA were found here with bronze spot and the parts of the wagons. It's not yet published. And now to the prisons, if I have still time, but I hope so. Prisons, Bici Scala Cave and uh, our uh, contemporary research. Uh, with Martin Golatz, we prepared the project in 2017-2019 or 
uh, <clears throat> firstly, uh, uh, the preparation works, uh, papers, books, and so on were uh, published in uh, in three years to be prepared uh, for the project. And in 2019, the project uh, we applied for the project of excavation, sondage excavation inside the Vichy Scala cave. Finally, we got permission and uh, uh, we received the permission for three years, but we were just quick and uh, the ex excavation took place in two years, in 2020 and 2021. This year, the excavation won't continue. The principal investigator was uh, uh, was uh, Palatsky University in Olomouc. Uh, Martin Goletz with colleague uh, Lukáš Kučera from uh, Department of Analytical Chemistry and I as a co-investigator from uh, Charles University Prague. Of course, regional partners like uh, Moravian Museum in Brno and many other institutions uh, from Czech Republic like uh, universities, museums, Academy of Science and so on. And uh, all these people are helping us uh, with uh, processing of the material uh, from the excavation. So what's the objective uh, of the project? First of all, it was the revision uh, of one group profiles from 1872. If uh, basically, if his description, description uh, really, uh, <clears throat> uh, really corresponds to reality in the cave. Uh, second one was uh, obtaining of new scientific samples. And the third one, which is not written here, uh, was how uh, the construction from World War II affected the situation in the Vichy Scala cave. So uh, here is a map of the cave uh, with uh, uh, geographical, uh, geographical position of our sondage. And uh, as you can see here, there was sondage one and two. I won't speak about them because uh, they were negative. And after 20 centimeters, we discovered uh, concrete. So uh, we started with sondage three, four, and uh, in this year, five and six. Uh, I will also explain why uh, these weird shapes have the sondage. So uh, entrance hall, hall in 2020, 2022. Uh, Wankel described uh, five layers. Uh, first one was Wankel A, sandy or clay layer. Second one, limestone. Uh, Wankel C, burnt lime or the so-called cave center. Uh, Wankel D, black coal layer or more probably results of organic decomposition. Uh, and Wankel E uh, cave loss or sandy layer. There is a original uh, image from Wankel, uh, original profile showing the situation. And uh, here is a profile of uh, uh, Docent Perisek uh, who discovered almost identic, identic, identical um, uh, layers like Wankel described. So as you can see here, clay, stones, so-called travertine, carbon and sand. Uh, here just uh, some pictures uh, from the excavation, uh, how it looks like uh, when you dig inside the cave, uh, work works uh, inside like sieving, and outside flotation of ore sediments, uh, of course, has to be outside the cave. Uh, now to the sondage. Uh, there is a sondage free, uh, which was uh, near the so-called smithy uh, in, the, uh, in the corridor or uh, in the empty part between uh, the concrete, uh, uh, concrete uh, parts. Uh, the concrete is from uh, 1944 45, and uh, 
we've been very, very, very lucky because uh, in one small triangular shape here in 2020, we discovered original untouched, uh, untouched profile, uh, not distracted by Wankel or someone after him. Uh, but uh, the sondage was too small, so we waited one year uh, to uh, put away the concrete here and uh, we can continue uh, with excavation. Uh, what you can see here, it's probably one plus layer A. Uh, inside these small sandy uh, colorful layers, we found some parts of uh, <clears throat> Uh, of uh, human bones like fingers uh, or small parts of, of bronze artifacts like bracelets and ceramic. So it was untouched fluidy layer. Unfortunately, uh, below the la layer, we haven't discovered uh, the layers of Uncle B, C, D and so on. But uh, this layer uh, basically uh, light on the layer E, which is uh, cave loss and uh, uh, which was sterile from a uh, Hallstatt period found. So, <clears throat> but still we continued here and uh, trying to search for the Paleolithic artifacts and uh, which we found also here. Here is uh, Sondage 4. Uh, it looks a little bit messy, but I guess it's after the taking some samples already in this photograph. Uh, in this sondage, uh, we discovered mixed Wankel's layers. Uh, how we know it? Because in first five centimeters, you can find uh, rec recent things like a, a, a brown uh, wood, uh, wooden samples, uh, recent nails, and so on. Uh, but after this, just Hallstatt period finds. <clears throat> so we've been very lucky and uh, uh, about one uh, uh, meter and 10 centimeters, also the part of the black layer, the so-called so cola layer here or cremation or uh, cremation ground here. Uh, this part, which you can uh, see here, it's a, a concrete collector who goes uh, until 70 uh, centimeters uh, below the surface. And it's uh, quite uh, nice uh, <clears throat> discovered that uh, it hasn't destroyed the most uh, important layers. So even uh, the deepest uh, war uh, constructions, in fact, didn't destroy the situations inside the Beachy Scala Cave and it's quite valuable. Uh, also, we've captured a flute, uh, some small fluted layer between uh, uh, two layers C and D, as you can see here on the picture. And uh, what was quite nice uh, that we found some construction element, a uh, wooden pole, uh, we, as you can see here. <clears throat> And we've been very, very lucky and happy and said, yes, we will have a dendrological datum. But unfortunately, uh, for Hallstatt period, uh, 50 years of the rings, it's not enough. So we have no datum. And maybe next time, we just know it's uh, uh, the wood uh, oak. Uh, Sondage 5 from this oh. year. <clears throat> uh, it's uh, bigger than the Sondage 4 uh, or Sondage 3. As you can uh, see here, uh, we wanted to discover uh, basically how the cave was uh, white uh, during the Wankos period, because during the World War II, uh, the cave bench and the pillar uh, was this, were destroyed uh, to make some more space inside the cave. And we are lucky, we discovered the bench here, as you can see, and the part uh, uh, of the so-called cremation ground. As you can see, the black layer here. Uh, so we uh, were able to take some samples. 
uh, on the buoy, uh, on the cremation ground or on the black layer uh, light some nice artifacts like uh, big parts of the rims of the wagons or some import, uh, imported pottery. Some ditch six uh, in the uh, other part of the cave. Uh, that's why it has so weird shape because we wanted to discover it how the pillar exactly went and it was quite important for the reconstruction of the process and especially the flutes inside the cave. So there is a pillar and the second objective was to find the so-called stone paving from Vanko. As you can see here, uh, we discovered some uh, huge stones which are in the same exact position described by Heinrich Wankel. And uh, now we know it's not uh, artificial or human-made paving, but it's just the part uh, of the pillar who fell down and the Hallstatt period people use it uh, like uh, uh, for, uh, for the burials, but it's not uh, artificial and so on. What was quite interesting and really important, uh, we discovered uh, this untouched layer, who seems for us to be the Wankel layer A, uh, but then uh, below it, uh, we discovered uh, mixed layers C and D, and then we realized it's the layer from 1927, the flute, which is uh, historically uh, captured. So, uh, here it looks, uh, here you can see how it looks like when the flute uh, uh, visits the cave. Uh, because sometimes uh, when uh, in, inside the Vichy Scala cave, when it's uh, uh, much more water, uh, the, <clears throat> the cave river uh, leave uh, its uh, river bank and sometimes can visit also entrance hall and flute everything inside the cave. Here you can see the picture of uh, some uh, analysis or some tape uh, samples uh, which were taken during our excavations. So uh, what's quite nice, we uh, from every 10 liter bucket, we've got like one liter of macro residue. Residues what's quite unusual. So here you can see macro residues. Here it's uh, micro sediments taking quite very important, especially for the flooding events. Uh, here, uh, <laughs> here it's uh, unfortunately uh, the dendrochronology, which uh, for us wasn't so good. Uh, here it's uh, Professor Pavlik uh, taking uh, samples for uh, uh, bacteriological research and uh, some uh, new method like uh, soil DNA, which uh, we are trying also. So there, that was the present and now what about the future? Uh, we are uh, trying to finish all the analyses and uh, expect, we are expecting results of scientific samples taken and uh, we expect to uh, receive in, uh, new information uh, in uh, more uh, levels like archaeological field, analyses and specific analyses also, also from the depositories. So you can see chemical samples, sediments, palynology, and so on, and uh, various analyses like ceramic isotopes uh, also. And uh, also we are uh, trying to also concentrate on uh, analysis of the material from uh, museums, uh, because we have new material and uh, all the time it's good to compare it uh, with all the material. Uh, like uh, uh, new uh, anthropological analyses and so on. Uh, in the uh, next uh, five years, uh, we expect to publish uh, the new monograph, uh, the phenomenon, it's the working name, the phenomenon of the Vichy Scala Cave, uh, Cave 2 New Insight, where all the results of all the analyses should be published together. Uh, just to summarize, 
uh, first results of the Bichi Scala Cave project. So we found some new artifacts uh, which never been discovered inside the Bichi Scala Cave, like linchpins or very fine imported Adriatic pottery. So it's quite nice or Nordic pin from the uh, northern Poland. Uh, also some nice bronze parts of the belts, uh, of course. Uh, then uh, what's quite interesting inside the Vichy Scala cave, we have combination of both rites, burial rites like cremation and inhumation. That's what we can uh, certainly say about the, uh, after the excavation. So it might be connected also with the Platinice and Horakov group. We will see also maybe some burning and anaerobic routing. It's documented by chemistry. Uh, firstly, uh, Wankel thought uh, oh, and other uh, scholars thought that a cremation ground is just cremation, but some parts uh, are most probably connected to the cave manganese and uh, anaerobic routing and of course, also burning. So it's more complicated than even before. Uh, some uh, macro residue seems to be also transported from different areas. Uh, that's just the first, uh, uh, first uh, signal. And uh, microstratography shows uh, various flooding events also during the use of the cave in the Hallstatt period. So even in the Hallstatt period, they knew that the flood will enter the cave and uh, the flood entered the cave also during the use of the cave. So quite very important and interesting. Uh, the cave was firstly cleaned before uh, they begin with the construction in the, uh, in, inside the cave. What does it mean? Uh, basically, the Hallstatt period layers sit on the Paleolithic layers directly, and it's quite weird. It looks like everything uh, uh, older was wiped out, and uh, they cleaned the surface, uh, and then they began, they began uh, <clears throat> directly construct something inside the entrance hall. Also, uh, we can suggest that there was uh, some kind of an architecture because uh, the wooden pole, which we found, wasn't the first one. Uh, the first one was uh, already described by Heinrich Wankel, and uh, uh, he is also describing uh, small uh, burnt places, uh, he which uh, he, he think it was like fireplaces. Uh, but uh, after this, his description, uh, his fireplace uh, look exactly like uh, our wooden pole. So it's not, uh, it's probably that inside the cave we can find even more construction elements and wooden poles. So, and uh, what's uh, important that uh, uh, these chambers or constructions or so on, were placed uh, to the largest fluid flow intentionally. They didn't uh, choose the place inside the cave, which is not fluted, like uh, the, the forest part, the northern part of the cave, but they put it in exactly where the, uh, where the water flows near the pillar till, uh, until the lower entrance. So we can maybe uh, already said the way water played important role during the burial rite in the uh, Vichy Scala cave. Uh, I guess it's the last slide, a focus on the people or uh, Vienna adventure uh, in March. So uh, uh, this, uh, this month, uh, I'm uh, with my colleagues, uh, we are in uh, Vienna to uh, do something more. Uh, also, I would like to thank uh, Natur Historische Museum Vienna, Anthropological and Ar uh, Archaeological Department for allowing us to do all the analysis and observation of the schools and material because it's quite important for us. And uh, in these days, uh, uh, 
co my colleague uh, Schneiberger and Verdi are now uh, doing new anthropological examination of the skulls from Vichy Scala cave. And next week we will uh, with uh, colleague Jakub Trubac uh, focus on uh, some sampling and isotope analysis. So it's uh, uh, the project uh, which will take a part uh, of the big project of the Vichy Scala cave. Uh, <clears throat> excavation and the Vichy Scala cave project of, uh, and its evaluation. Uh, after this, uh, we will also uh, uh, evaluate this, uh, these uh, observations and maybe, maybe in the far, far future, do some DNA analysis and uh, re facial reconstruction of the individuals and so on. Uh, some uh, nice pictures uh, from our uh, excavations, uh, from flooding and uh, digging and so on. And there is a mascot of our excavation. So really, thank you for your attention. And if you have some questions, don't hesitate to ask me. I will try to respond to you as uh, best as I can. Okay, thank you very much.